Welcome to the Sports Cast. September 20th, 2018, football is underway. College football is in week three. I mean, week three um, has finished for college football. Week two has finished for the NFL. And the biggest news of the week, I think, is Josh Gordon traded to the Patriots for a fifth-round pick. And to join us to talk to us about that is Ryan Krista. Welcome to the Sports Cast. Hey, thanks, thanks, Sandaga, for having me. Glad to be here. A lot of talk in the sports this year, and especially this time of year. Yes. Um, w- like, one of the things that I've noticed this week was the biggest news of Josh Gordon. Were you surprised? Why did Cleveland do this? Um, will this help out the Patriots? Oh, you know, this is a, you know, it's kind of a, not a big gamble for the Patriots. It's just an pick, you know. The Browns wanted to get something for him, so it's better than nothing. But, you know, the Patriots have gone through a lot. He's been very successful, and the Browns kind of gave him every chance. You know, they pretty much let him skip training camp so he could stay in, you know, rehab, you know, and he comes back, you know, and they're suspicious of this hamstring injury he's saying he's got. And all of a sudden he gets traded to the Patriots, and he's ready to play healthy. So it's <laughs> kind of a little mysterious for me, but the Browns are giving him every opportunity, and I think they're just ready to move on, you know. This, you know, this new GM here, you know, for the Browns, uh, John Dorsey, you know, I have a lot of respect for him, you know. I think he's putting together a pretty darn good football team, you know. You know, that's ready to, you know, ready to get some wins this year. Uh, and they're not going to, you know, just take crap from anybody, but... In the same sense as, you know, that there's be another Randy Moss here, you know, a troubled wide receiver goes to the Patriots and turns his uh, uh, career around. Yeah, was letting go of Amendola like a big deal? Uh, do you think that was a big uh, big hole that they had to fill? I think that, you know, Amendola is a very talented wide receiver, you know, Patriots. I don't know if it was ever the player they thought he was going to be when he signed with them. You know, it just seems like the Patriots, you know, they're kind of arrogant and cocky in the way that, you know, they think they can take anybody who to play wide receiver. And that's probably true because you got the greatest, you know, quarterback to go back to number 12. Uh, so you just need the right players and the right, you know, who fits the system. And that's kind of why they go through so many wide receivers, you know, looking for that. You know, the unselfish guy, you know, who, you know, willing to do the little things. Kind of like a Julian Edelman, you know, <laughs> out there. Wes Walker, you might say. Yeah, yeah, very similar players, short and stout. Um, here are the two and O teams that are in the league right now. There are, the, um, I mean, here are the teams that are, uh, two and O, uh, the Dolphins, the Chiefs, the Broncos, uh, the Bengals, the Jaguars, uh, the Rams. And the Buccaneers. Um, there is a statistic where it says if you're two and zero, you have, you have a sixty two percent chance making the playoffs. How do you see these teams? Are they a weak two and zero teams, or they're well deserved to be one of the best in the league? <laughs> uh, you know, like any start of any season, you know, we look at the <laughs> wins and losses in this segment very closely. It's important to get off to a good start, but you know. You take a one and one um, Eagles team, you know they, you know they look shaky against the Falcons. Didn't play good against the Buccaneers, but now they get their starting quarterback back. So you you look at that team, and you, they might be you know one and one, but they're a good one and one. Um, well, you kind of take a look at you know the Dolphins, you know like at the Jets is a one and one team. You know they played a bad Lions team that we're finding out and. Um, play the Dolphins, you know, it, you know, it's all in the perspective, you know, it's, you, you can take some out of these beginning of the season, but you can't, you know, just because you start 2-0 and doesn't mean you're going to be a great team, and if you're 0-2, it's not time to uh, go crazy, you know, but it's important to get off to get started, a lot of positive momentum uh, going, but it, you know, doesn't make you a playoff team, and it, you know, it also... Uh, doesn't guarantee you success for the season, but uh, you know it's, it's important to get off to a good start. So Patrick Mahomes had a great start uh, these past two games. Um, he he um, he threw for three hundred and twenty six yards. 
against the Steelers, and um, he's doing a lot for that age of 22. Do you think he is the future star quarterback of the NFL? <laughs> it's off a wonderful start there, Santiago. You know, what he's done this year is nothing short of, you know, awesome, you know, <laughs> unprecedented. You know, it's kind of goes back, you know, it's twofold. You know, he's a very talented quarterback, played in, you know, uh, pass friendly offense in college, put up monster stats. Then comes to the NFL, you know, and the Chiefs have pretty much built their team, you know, like a college offense, you know, they're spreading it out. They, you know, they're throwing the ball all around. It's, uh, Andy Reid is, you know, through the years has been able to, uh, kind of change his, his football changes, you know. He's shown that he's not just a great play caller, probably the best play caller in the NFL for sure. I know, I think one of your, um, one of the other people who do the sports guys is a really huge Chiefs fan, you know. And is it Jeff? Is that his name? That is correct. But, uh, yeah, you know, as a you know, fellow Bronco, you know, as a Broncos fan, you know, I'm. <laughs> it's it's not looking good for the future of the Broncos, and you got to go against Patrick Mahomes there, you know, twice a year. The Broncos are two and zero. Oh. They defeated uh, the Raiders twenty to nineteen, and they defeated the Seahawks uh, twenty seven to twenty four. How do you see Case Keenum uh, working out with the Broncos? Uh, you know, last week was a weird game in Santiago. You know, they, they're they terrible in the first half. The Raiders just take it to them, you know. You know, the Raiders score right, you know, right before the half and make it, tw- you know, 12 nothing in the Broncos. You know, I haven't heard much about it, but they block an extra point uh, right before half, make it 12 nothing. You know, end up coming on the second half, you know, and they're able to have a balanced offensive effort. Running and passing, and you know, being able to have a 2019 victory because they're able to block that extra point was a difference. But Chase Keenum, you know, like the rest of the Broncos, often struggled in the first half. But you know, they got their rhythm going in the second half, and they made plays in the game-winning drive when they had to. You know, it's easy. You know, that's you know, you take a look at the start. They're two and zero, but both teams are home. You know, last year they started two and zero and ended up with five wins. So we'll see. You know. <laughs> I don't want to jump to, you know, any conclusions and saying they're a great team, but, you know, going cross country against Baltimore this week will be a great test for this team. Very much so. Um, speaking about other quarterbacks, Fitz Magic, do you think he'll be um, keeping that starting role if he, you know, keeps going how he's going? You know, I, I was telling you last week when we talked to pump the brakes, pump the brakes, but, you know, it's hard to pump the brakes when he has two. You know, two really great, you know, just not good games, but great games. You know, this is, you know, this is what this guy does, you know. <laughs> Comes out of nowhere when you least expect it, you know, and produces. You know, he's got the ultimate stage this week, Sunday, you know, Monday Night Football against the Steelers. So, if they win the game and he plays good, he's, how, how can you bench the guy? I agree. You, know, you I mean, to, you know, people before the year, you know, yeah. most people, you know, Handicap this team at zero and three because of you know Jameis Winston being out. Yeah, I mean if he, I mean I'll keep him playing even uh, even after the four game suspension unless he keeps winning. I mean unless he loses. If he loses a game, then maybe switch it. But it depends how bad the loss is or how like how the game went. Uh, but obviously, if he goes six and zero or goes seven and zero but lose that one game, make it seven and one, I'll still keep starting him. You know, unless he goes like two uh, consecutive losses or three or something goes really bad, uh, but I'll definitely give um, Fitz Ma- uh, Fitzpatrick. You know, Fitz Magic. Um, he's definitely has experience in the NFL, and um, he just you know shows up. He just never did it with the Jets. Yeah, you know he had, you know he got into the cusp of making the playoffs. You know, but it just seems like. It's just typical of Fitz, you know, Fitzpatrick when he was in Buffalo. You know, he came out of nowhere, you know, got a pretty good contract, goes to the Jets, gets another good contract, leads him to the Custer class. But, you know, his kind of his trademark is, you know, he gets you close, but, you know, he he kind of just kind of proves why he's always been a backup quarterback because he just can't win those big games. But, you know, best of luck to Fitzpatrick and the Buccaneers, you know, what happens. Indeed, it is, and with Mike Evans in my uh, in, in, like, like in my fantasy, the team is looking good, and uh, we'll see how far uh, can the magic go. 
uh, Fitz Magic can go. But um, anyways, college football. Let's look at the uh, top twenty-five this week: Alabama number one, Georgia number two, number three, Clemson, four, uh, Ohio State, fifth, Oklahoma, six, LSU. Heaven, Stanford, eighth, Notre Dame, ninth, Auburn, and tenth, Washington. How do you see the top ten? Uh, <laughs> it just seems like every week Alabama just keeps on getting better and better. <laughs> I just, you know, it's just hard and you watch the rest of the team not to see this team losing. But you know, Georgia, Georgia keeps trucking. Um, they got a you know, the game against uh, Missouri this week to kind of, you know, against another SEC East contender. But Alabama, you know, they got Texas A&M coming to town. But I was just so impressed with Alabama last week. 62-7, you know, fall behind 7 nothing within a minute of the game, and then they just respond and just curves down uh, the Rebels the rest of the game. You know, that's a good offense. You know, I wasn't worried about Alabama's offense. I think two was great. Uh, but Alabama's young secondary, I was worried for them. Going against a high-powered uh, Rebels offense, but they just they shut them down and they <laughs> they you know showed why they're the, you know the number one team in the country. Uh, and then you know Georgia, like I said, is playing great. Ohio State was stood a great test from TCU. I I think it, most people are more impressed by how good TCU is than how you know Ohio State made plays they needed to to win the game. But I was very impressed with that TCU team. They're fast. Probably, um, but again, probably, you know, the yeah, big go match. Oh, go ahead, Sam. Yeah, go. Probably the biggest matchup, which I think uh, you're in go to, was LSU Auburn. LSU jumped to six. It feels like LSU was underrated, and I think if they could beat Alabama, they could could become number one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they kind of uh, the running danger field right now. You know, they keep on winning, and no one really cares too much about it. You know, that was a great come from behind victory. Um, this this week in Auburn, which might be the you know the best victory of any team in college football this year so far. Um, when you weigh in the stage and the uh, venue and uh, go on the road in the SEC West, it's pretty hard to get a road victory. Uh, you know, but I think you know that if you look at their schedule, there's no way they're going to be able to keep this up for the rest of the year. I still think they're going to have a great season, but a great season just might be nine and three for the Tigers. Very, very impressive by LSU. Um, we'll see what happens. The, uh, their next game, I think, the, I believe their next biggest game is against Alabama in a few weeks. So we'll see. You know, but you, you got to look at this guy. You know, LSU, they still got games against, they got to go oh. to Florida, yeah, to Georgia, home against Alabama, home against Mississippi State. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a lot of tough games ahead for the Tigers and, teams. Right and there. if they could beat them all, they're for sure number one. <laughs> if they win them all, San Diego, you know, they're going to the SEC championship. But, you know, all roads, all roads to Atlanta and the SEC West go through Tuscaloosa, Alabama, for sure. NBA, Butler wants to go to the Clippers. Why does he want to leave? I mean, he keeps leaving from Chicago to Minnesota. Now he, he wants to go to the L.A. What's his deal? I, you know, the, <laughs> the Timberwolves just can't buy a break here. You know, they, you know, the, they've had a lot of years of struggle. You know, they drafted, you know, Carl Anthony Towns. They got Andrew Wiggins. You know, they think they're building this great team next, last year. They're bringing Jimmy Butler. And it did, you know, they made it to the playoffs, but I think anybody who watched the Timberwolves last year and the last year was kind of a failure for this team. Uh, they just they just didn't gel, you know. Jimmy Butler and Andrew Wiggins are kind of similar players. Now there's disagreement between Jimmy Butler and Anthony Towns. You know, uh, you know there's there's this notion that Anthony, you know, Carl Anthony Towns isn't going to sign a long term deal unless Jimmy Butler goes. So it's just a you know it's a lot of confusion. You know, ownership is regretting kind of giving time to both out the power to uh, make his own roster move. So. And let me just say this, Santiago. Every team there kind of has their coach, you know, bring, try to bring in a big name coach to have them uh, be the coach and the GM, i.e., Doc Rivers, um, Stan Van Gundy. It just, it just burns up, you know. You 
you know, let the coaches coach, bring in GMs to be GMs, you know. When when you give coaches too much power, you know, it, it just never seems to work out. Yeah, it's never worked out. Just leave the positions on your own, focus on coaching. Of course, have the GM and coaching be on, like, the same page in a way, like, you know, same vision. Oh, well, yeah, they should be on the same page, you know, but it just seems like whenever I see this, you know, that you try to learn these coaches, you know, how are you going to get a good name coach to go to the Minnesota? You got to give them, you know, you, know, you got to give them power, they say. You gotta, you can, how are you going to get Tom Thibodeau? You know, Tom Thibodeau isn't going to leave ESPN in this nice comfort chair to coach to be just a coach at Tim Wolves, I think, and, you know, I got, you know, if we give him power, he's going to come and coach him, though, and he's got, but it just seems to uh, backfire. Now, I think they got still some talent on the team, you know, they're, they can still contend for the bottom, you know, the playoff bracket in the West, but, without, you know, is it, they're not going to give up on this Jimmy Butler trade unless they absolutely have to, uh, but it doesn't look good for them right now. <laughs> but in return, if the Clippers can able to get him, you know, what a great, you know, <laughs> great addition to that, that team, you know. Yeah. Um, but like you say, uh, Towns is definitely the future of the club. So I'll definitely have, you know, give him more leverage than uh Oh, yeah, you know, that's, that's what the guy looks. You know, Butler's 32 years old and Towns is 25, so. <laughs> All right, ready for some predictions. Let's go. Texas A&M versus Alabama. <laughs> you know, this is a, a rematch. You know, re- well, they played before, but, you know, if you remember, Jimbo Fisher was once uh, Nick Saban's offensive coordinator at LSU. You know, they've become very good friends. Now they're in the same uh uh, division in the SEC, you know, Texas A&M paying Jimbo Fisher a lot of money to kind of dethrone the evil umpire known as Alabama football. But it's not going to happen today. It may not happen next year. But two years on the road, the way a Texas A&M is recruiting, this game will be the marquee game again in college, and especially in the SEC. So, but when it comes to Saturday, roll tide, big. <laughs> Stanford versus Oregon. Uh, well, you know, I'm sure you're going to go uh, pretty deep here soon with Ty Turner on this game, uh, but I'll, I'll let him dig into that. But I'll give you my prediction. I think uh, Oregon wins in a closely contested battle. And Florida versus Tennessee. Yeah, just as I was talking about Texas A&M and Alabama being the game in the SEC, when I was growing up, you kind of – Third Saturday in September, you know, or this is where the, you know, this is uh, CBS Day 30. You know where to find, you know which game is going to be in. It was going to be Florida and Tennessee. And the winner of that game was going to win the SEC. You know, ties have turned. Both programs hired new coaches this year. You know, this is an important game because both teams won. You know, without winning this game, it's going to be a long year. Because they just don't have the necessary talent to compete, you know, with the other teams in the conference so it's important that you know for both these teams to get this victory this year because it's important for recruiting because that's you know the lifeblood of any college football team but you know i'm true to the orange and blue santiago so go gators <laughs> jets versus browns oh i remember telling you two weeks ago this is the night cleveland ohio will be excited because the browns will get their first victory this team should be 2-0 in santiago they should have beat the steelers in overtime and they should have won last week, but they, you know, their kicker didn't. <laughs> their kicker uh, didn't have a pulled hamstring and didn't tell anybody during the game. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I think they dominate the Jets tonight. I don't think it'll be a high-scoring game, but you know, I, I think they won by at least ten points. Cowboys versus Seahawks. This is this is uh, interesting. This could be, you know, the Seahawks. We're talking about zero and two teams. They're desperate. Um, I don't think either team is really that great. Um, two teams that have pretty bad offensive lines right now. I think this could be an ugly game. Um, but, you know, I think that's first win and the Seahawks win and, you know, a brutal, you know, 13-10 to 10 type game. 
the Patriots versus the Lions. Ah. <laughs> uh. Teacher versus Stewart in Santiago. I told you the Lions are a bad team. The Patriots are pretty mad about what happened in Jacksonville last week. It's you know it's going to get ugly. <laughs> <laughs> must win for both, I guess. Yeah, it's a must win for the Lions. They just they just I think they're just not a very good team. I already, not many people knew that, but you watch them, and they just don't they don't look like the Lions we've seen the last couple of years. Maybe Jim Caldwell, you know. Uh, wasn't that bad of a coach. <laughs> so who do you think is going to win? I think the Patriots win. Big. <laughs> Broncos versus the Rams. Ravens? No. Oh, Ravens. My bad. <laughs> Not yet yet Rams. That's coming, but yeah, the I, Ravens. <laughs> I think they play on the, uh, very soon the Rams, but the uh, – you know, I, you know, just like I told you, I'm true to the orange and blue of Florida. I'm true to the orange of crush of uh, them. <laughs> but, you know, in a closely contested, I think the Broncos become three now. Do you think the Ravens' defense are are still good? They're not the Ravens of 2000, I guess, but <laughs> or even when they won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. But um, you know this. Defense is, you know, this is an above average defense for sure. They struggled mightily last week against Andy Dalton on Thursday night, but they had a week and a half to prepare for the Broncos. That's it, you know, it's going to be a good game, you know, could go either way, but, you know, I'll be cheering hard for the Broncos. Steelers versus the Bucks, Monday night football. Ah, that's. It's magic, right, Santiago? So it's magic. Go against him, you know? <laughs> now, I think the Buckingham's go to 3-0. The Steelers have a laundry list of internal issues to deal with. You know, I just, you know, this this is a make-or-break game for the Steelers. If this, this doesn't go their way, you know, their season could really blow up. Do you think, here's my, want to hear your thoughts. Here, uh, here are my top two teams. I mean, well, my top team in the NFC are the Rams, and my top team in the AFC is the Jags. Can you concur with that? You're you're completely right. The two most talented teams, I think, in the NFL. Uh, the difference is the Rams, I think, have much better quarterback play, but they both have you know star-studded defenses. It takes a lot to score on each of those teams. Uh, you know, like I told you, the Rams are built for this year. They are going to collapse here in a couple of years because of the salary cap issues. They, they've got all these players signed to humongous deals that they can't afford to pay because of the salary cap. But they want to win now, and uh, I think they're going to. That's that. You know, I would be very surprised if, if the Rams aren't playing in the Super Bowl this year. And there you have it, Ryan Krista. How can people reach you? Uh, check me out on Twitter, the Mad Dog Report. Uh, get, you know, Always tweeting, the, you know, a little Liberty, football, Gators football, Broncos. But, you know, San Diego, our Liberty Flames hosting the Mean Green of uh, North Texas this week. Big game for us. Yes, who's uh, who's going to win that one? Oh, I, you know, I think Liberty will have to play the game of their lives to compete. This is a, a North Texas team that just beat an SEC team on the road by, you know, 30 points. <laughs> <laughs> uh we, we could be in for a long day. <laughs> it should be good. How's Liberty doing so far? Uh, being in the uh, in like the single A. Uh, it's just, you know they got that opening day victory against Old Dominion, and then uh, struggled against Army last week. Saw to them, but you know then they were hurricaned out last week. So this is really their third game, but this is by far you know the best ever football team to play in. Uh, at Liberty this week, you know, of all the good teams that come and play Liberty, this is by far the best team to ever come to Liberty. Low expectations, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I might say the best ever team to come to Liberty might be in a couple weeks when the Troy Trojans come to town. So That's this, right. <laughs> Which <laughs> Troy you know, beat Nebraska or someone not too long ago? Yeah, you know, this is yeah. The last week, the Troy Troy University is definitely a giant killer for sure. Right. If you remember last year, last year that's the team that went down to Baton Rouge and beat LSU. So it'll definitely be a tough game. Well, sports keeps going; it makes the world go round. If you want to, you know, take a take a vacation from work or vacation from anything from life, sports is a good distraction. It's a it's an entertainment, exactly, you know, but it does well. <laughs> uh, but anyways, 
Ryan, thanks for coming on to the sportscast. Thanks, Cassandra. Thank you very much. I love you, Manny. Bye-bye.